In this video, I'll share three exercises that will help you get creative and defeat art block. Learning how to draw anything can be a very vulnerable process, especially when we have high expectations of what our art should look like. And then our drawing skills at the time can't meet those expectations. I remember this being one of my biggest struggles when I first started. The procrastination, the expectations, and then the dreadful art block. Tell me if this sounds familiar to you. You buy a new, beautiful sketchbook. You start thinking about all the fun times you'll have filling it up with cool drawings. You get home, open it, and... nothing. That first white page is looking at you like you will insult your ancestors' ancestors if you do a wrong line. What if this drawing is ugly? What if I'm not good enough? I've been there. I've had this sketchbook for years, and it's still empty. But these three exercises have helped me get out of that art block. And start other sketchbooks. Not that one. That one's too pretty. The first exercise we will be playing will be the blob game. This game always helps me if I'm struggling with art block. Because the whole idea is to make silly drawings and not worry about how they look. This will get you drawing and inside your creative spirit without you getting into your own head. And you will be drawing before you know it. I feel like one of the biggest struggles I have before drawing is just starting. As I mentioned before, we're constantly drilled with content and notifications. So it's nice to take a moment to have fun and be creative without worrying much about the end result. So, to start, I'll make a bunch of blobs. Draw them without thinking. Just move your hand and make silly blobs. Once you fill the page, make a new layer. And on this layer, we'll draw. The idea is to move the page around, zoom in and out, until you recognize something in a particular blob. It can be a character, an animal, anything. But once you recognize it, draw it. These drawings should be fast and loose. They don't have to look perfect at all. I want you to find the inner child within you that would find shapes in the clouds. And let them draw for you. They wouldn't care if that drawing would end up in a museum. They only cared about the fun of it. And that's the main goal of this game. To find the fun in drawing. This is one of my top games to pass the time. Sometimes I'll even drag my friends into it. If I'm waiting in line or just bored, I'll pull out my phone and make blobs in my Procreate pocket. Then we'll take turns finding things in the blobs. It's an effective and fun way to oil up the creative gears in our brains. And most importantly, it gets you drawing. Let's move on to the second exercise, one-line drawings. As the name suggests, during this exercise, you'll be drawing things using only one line. I found that sometimes, when I focus too much on the details, it can be daunting to start a drawing. This exercise allows you to focus on the bigger shapes rather than the minor details. Plus, it allows you to put that first line in. So if you're ever waiting in front of a blank page and inspiration seems to be running late, what you'll do is you'll find something around your house that grabs your attention. I'll use these lemons as my reference. 
but you can choose anything you want. And now, without lifting the Apple Pencil from my screen, draw the contour of your object. Move your hand freely. Don't worry too much about how it looks. Just keep moving your hand and find the contours of your subject. And when you're done, draw it again from another angle. Just keep moving your hand. This is another great way to get creative if you feel like you're in a rut. I personally try to avoid the word inspiration. I feel like if we only create when we're inspired, there will be a lot of lost creative moments while we wait for the inspiration to gracefully come to us from the heavens. <laughs> it's important for me to take an active approach to inspiration. When we're struggling with artist block, there's only one solution, and that is to start drawing. <laughs> As the artist Paul Klee would say, just take a line for a walk. <laughs> so I grab the first thing that grabs my attention and start creating, without any concerns about how this drawing will look at the end. Allowing my inner child to come out and have fun with art is usually the best way for me to get into a good creative mood. The last exercise is blind contour drawing. This one is very similar to the previous one, but it's on X Games mode. <laughs> because now you'll draw without looking at your screen. Yep, you heard that correctly. <laughs> so how does it work? Well, the first time I did this exercise, I did it using my own reflection as an example. So that's what we'll do today. Set a mirror or the camera from your phone in front of you. The important thing is that you are able to look at yourself. And without removing your eyes from your reflection, draw the contours you see. Try your absolute best not to cheat. I know that screen is calling you like a siren to a sailor <laughs> because you want to know if it's a good drawing, if you're doing a good job. But that's not the important thing about this exercise. The important thing is just to move your hand. And just by doing that, you are doing a good job. <laughs> so try not to get seduced until you're done with your drawing. This exercise helps you improve your hand-to-eye coordination. Plus, you'll end up with a funny-looking self-portrait. And I bet you didn't even notice this, but you've been drawing this whole time. <laughs> Take that art block! <laughs> Paul Klee has another interesting metaphor. He says that artists are like trees that draw from a rich compost of experiences. The things that we see, read, hear, or even dream enrich us. And we can only create something out of something else. For me, inspiration and the law of conservation of mass have a lot in common. I believe that inspiration can't be created or destroyed. It can only change forms. So it's important that, as artists, we take an active role in our own inspiration. Because all the things that we see and experiences we have can eventually be transformed into things we can bring with us when we're taking that line for a walk. In other words, your creative input determines your creative output. That being said, it's your turn to kick Artblock's buttocks. <laughs> Go to the worksheets of this video and start by playing the blob game. Fill at least three pages with silly blobs and find things in them. Then do the same with one-line drawings and blind contour drawings. I'm asking for at least three layers of each, but I'm sure you'll find these exercises to be a lot of fun. So feel free to do as many as you want. Remember that improving your art takes time and effort. 
and that inspiration isn't usually created out of thin air. But how exciting is it to know that you are in control of your own improvement? The more time you spend just drawing, the better you'll become. This is why these exercises are so helpful. Because they get you drawing, inspired and having fun. <laughs>